One of the things we don't do is we don't shy away from any topic on Yud, on, Yud, on video, but we rather address them succinctly, professionally, compassionately as much as possible and relate Jesus to that issue or that problem or that circumstance no matter what it may be. And sometimes we don't want to talk about things that maybe we should. Sometimes we don't want to deal with suffering. We don't want to sing the songs in the night that maybe we don't appreciate how we came to that place of crying on our pillow in the midst of an agonizing and realization of how fallible and fleshy our body is and we despair of the faith that God has given us and why he's placed us there in that place where we feel all alone and there's no one to console us no one to comfort us and we feel as though God has forsaken us and we reach out and we sing the songs of the words that God has given us to restore our faith to bring us back to streams in the desert that refresh our soul for we have been parched and dried even as Jesus himself before he died likewise went into the desert to be tempted of the devil and he was tried and tested and likewise in the garden of Gethsemane he suffered greatly spiritually for our salvation and then knowing that he was going to go through an agonizing death he was whipped and beaten within an inch of his life so to speak and it was true for very much so even the men that saw him were shocked at how he was marred more than any other man before he was crucified. And so we know that Jesus suffered. And Songs in the Night brings us to that place and that compassion of looking at streams in the desert and recognizing that the tears of stains of the times we spent on our pillow crying are very much caught up in a little vessel that God takes and collects all our tears and puts them in a sea of remembrance so that we would not remember any more the suffering that we will have gone through but we will rejoice that day of salvation not recorded any more of all that we have agonized through and so be encouraged that songs in the night is about suffering we will deal with that subject and topic and we will go through streams in the desert as one who has been there and she has watched her husband die in front of her and perish. God has given us all the ability to be comforted and to comfort. And so in Songs in the Night video, we will always sing those songs and think of those things that bring us to that place of maybe tenderness and compassion. Realizing that each and every one of us must face some type of suffering. Because even as a woman goes through travail and must bear the sufferings of giving, giving birth and bringing forth a child. She no longer remembers the pain for the joy that she sees in that life that's given to her. She holds in her hands and she sees that for the first time and her pain is remembered no more as bad as it was what she experienced. And the same thing is true as we are told that the day will come when we will remember no more the sufferings that we have gone through for they won't be anything to be compared with the joy that's set before us even as Jesus himself looked forward to the day of salvation seeing that we would be saved and endured the cross knowing that the suffering was nothing to be compared with what would to be accomplished even though he still felt the pain and the agony you too will experience pain you will experience suffering as a Christian you too at some point in time will agonize for your faith you'll agonize for your soul you will go through a time where you need songs in the night. It came to pass that the brook dried up. 1 Kings 17.7 The education of our faith is incomplete if we have not learned that there is a providence of loss, a ministry of failing, and of fading things, a gift of emptiness, a time of passing away. The material insecurities of life made for its spiritual establishment. The dwindling stream by which Elijah sat and mused is a true picture of the life of each and every one of us. It came to pass that the brook dried up. That is the history of our yesterday and a prophecy of our morrows, for tomorrow it may be that our brook has dried up. 
In some way or other, we will have to learn the difference between trusting in the gift and trusting the giver. The gift may be good for a while, but the giver is the eternal love. Cherith was a difficult problem to Elijah and until he got to Zarephath, and then it was all of us, it was to him all as clear as daylight once he had arrived at his destination. Zarephath, words are never his last words. The woe and the waste and the tears of life belong to the interlude and not to the finale of our life's expression as we give voice to that which we experience at the time of our suffering. Had Elijah been led straight to Zarephath, he would have missed something that helped him to make him a wiser prophet and a better man. He lived by faith at Cherith. And whatsoever in your life and mine some spring of earthly and outward resource has dried up. It has been that we might learn that our hope and our help are in God who made heaven and earth. I know for myself I look at and I recognize that I have been through great suffering and agony of soul. I have been to those times where it was God who provided and God who gave me my sustenance and God who made me whole. I have faced death and I have been through that agony of suffering and knowing that I would die. And yet, when all hope was lost, God paid the price and the cost of my health and my sustenance and brought me through to another side. And so too with you. God will take you through a time where it seems as though there is no hope and no help in any other place. But you must recognize that it is not what God gives you that brings you to the place of faith, but what you trust in Him when you have nothing that gives glory to God in the highest. For when you have no other place to turn to and you offer up songs of deliverance in the midst of your pain, in the time of your agony, when you should be looking to partake of some type of provision for yourself and you stop rather and rejoice in what God has done, and you turn to the name of the Son of Man, the Son of God, and you declare He is faithful. God is blessed by your faith in Him. Don't miss out on the precious time of sorrow. Don't neglect the time of tears and crying in the night. Don't forget that there are songs that are given that only you can sing when you go through that portion of suffering that only God can bring in hand to you and say, this is your cross. Bear it as I have. And when you pass out on the other side, you will thank God and look back and remember no more the pain that gave birth to the reality of the person you'll become. For you will be even likened unto the Son of God.